Amen. I've listened to ministers for many years. Yes. I've listened to ministers that I knew were capable men and were great men in God. I value the ministry I've listened to. Yes. I've listened to great men of God. Yes. Men of highly alone. Amen. Men that knew this word from the old timers used to say from kipper to kipper. From cover to cover. They fed my soul. But I've never yet had one of them fully outline, fully explain, and tell me just how the early church had church, had worship. That is not church, had worship. The church had worship. You don't have church. You have worship. The church comes together to have worship. You don't have church. The church comes together right. to have worship. Amen. And I listen to them go through the Bible, the types and shadows from uh, Genesis to Revelation, and there's excerpts, there's little <laughs> tiny dots in the scriptures, in the New Testament, certainly not in the Old, in the New Testament, giving us a little insight into part of what they did some of what they did in worship when they came together. For instance, I'll give you an example. In uh, 1 Corinthians 14, when Paul is explaining the order of tongues in the church, speaking in tongues, speaking in the unknown language, and he was trying to straighten the Corinthians out on the babbling and not interpreting. And he said, you do this, you will appear to be mad. And an unbeliever comes in your midst and he outlines and he deals with prophecy and tongues in that 14th chapter. 13th chapter was charity. The 12th chapter was the order of the body. And he went right through those different chapters dealing with different subjects. Paul touched it. In 1 Corinthians 14, he did an example of what I'm saying. Um, he said, um, verse 26, and this is a little insight, but this doesn't explain all of how the church had worship. And that's why that I've never been critical of a Wednesday night service Come on, or a Saturday night service or a Sunday afternoon service because uh, I know that we're doing all we can do to connect with the mind of God in worship. Since we don't have a bulletin outline, we don't have a manual point by point describing what they did in one hour, two hours, if they were together three hours. How many songs did they sing? How did they sing them? What kind of music did they have? Did they allow the saints to testify freely, openly, as we strive to do at times? At times we don't. At times our services where the saints can mingle their voice and mix their voice. Tonight was one of those times. Anyone could have moved in. There was liberty. If, if, if you didn't get into that liberty that was here earlier, it was because you just didn't feel or wasn't led or didn't have something to get into it with and it wasn't time or God did not inspire you or you were not moved to do that. But there was liberty. Liberty to, uh, like Brother Don, to sit back there and he's sitting back there and nobody's noticing him. And uh, he's, he's suddenly, Brother Don, you're not the same man you were, Brother Don. No, he's not. Thank God through your tribulation you're becoming a new man. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. I'm watching Don. I, I never knew Don Norman to be this spiritual, gifted to play the piano, but not spiritually moved as he is. If tribulation can do that, then tribulation is worth that. If tribulation leads us closer to God, then let tribulation be in our life. Amen. No wonder Paul says we glory in tribulation. And, and I can understand that now, can't you? We glory in tribulation. 
in uh, tribulation were with patience, patience experience is experience. Let me go back here to Romans, because I don't have too long, and I know the young people will be coming in. But uh, I just wanted to get in here. I didn't feel to get up earlier. I didn't want to get up earlier. And I don't know that I wanted to get up now, but I do feel like I can contribute a little something right here that would be helpful, I pray, to each one. Romans, he said, how is it then, brethren, when you come together, and we've come together tonight, every one of you hath a song, a song. That is the song, just like Sister um, Annette gave it, the song. Every one of you had a song. And then they used the songs, did they not? Notice that on the road to Emmaus, when Jesus was instructing the disciples and they didn't know who he was, they went to the songs, did they not? That was part in the 24th chapter of Luke. They went to the Psalms. So the Psalms, evidently, God used them under the law, and God used them under grace. Amen. Because they're so rich. They're like a mine, yes. rich with diamonds and pearls. Yes. And you go in and get what's in the Psalms. And I read the Psalms as much as I read the Gospels. Always have. I read the Psalms as much as I read the Gospels. Yes. Because it's a rich mind field. Yes, it is. You can go into the Psalms. If you ever need inspiration to study the scriptures, go to the Psalms. Yes, sir. And God will begin to talk to you. Amen. God will begin to show you. Amen. And so he said, you have a song. And, and he said, uh, have a doctrine. So they didn't have doctrines. They did stop shouting, singing. They stopped being uh, physically manifesting in their spirit, uh, manifestations of the bodily exercise, and they obviously dealt with doctrine or underlying statements of faith. That's one explanation of doctrine. Underlying statements of faith that they believed, the faith of the apostles, doctrine, underlying. The, the, that which pinned the church up, pillared the church up, foundation material that kept the church Amen. from being foolish or being wrong or being blind or ignorant of the scriptures. And so they had doctrine. Now, did they have that doctrine every time they came together? We have no way of knowing. We don't know that. Uh, what I'm saying now, and I won't get to say a lot on this, but some of you brethren can take this thought up and, and, and go further with it. Brother Carlson, you're a man of the scriptures. You could go further with it, Brother Rhodes, Brother Langford, but I'm down all the elders sitting here, out here in his elders, around me and men that study the scriptures. Did they, what I'm saying this for is because sometimes people coming into this order and they'll see a service like this, uh, they could be critical of it. Uh, what are they doing? They sang some songs, several songs, very exuberant, people praise the Lord. And then here they sang, they just sang. And uh, was there an order to that? Was there a direction to that? Yeah. There certainly is. Yes. Because, but they that wait upon the Lord. <laughs> See, that, that, that's, a, that's a scripture we can use. Yes, Waiting on the Lord is when you ponder what God wants you to do next. Yes. Right. You wait on the Lord. Praise the Lord. You're pondering what God wants you to do next. Waiting upon the Lord. And waiting upon the Lord is part of worship. You don't rush in. You wait upon the Lord and see what God wants you to do. So did they have doctrine? every time they came together. Amen. And then he, then he said, uh, have the tongue. Did they speak in tongues every time they came together? Uh, I don't believe so. <laughs> if they would have, it would have been excess. And the scriptures 
is always against excess. Uh, because excess leads to habit, and habit becomes a fixed motion, yes. sometimes, of yourself and not of God. So they had to wait upon the Lord. And they we, we used a term, and we got it from earlier days in this body of people. I really think it originated from Brother Souders, William Souders, uh, watch the spirit. Watch the spirit. Now that's not a, a biblical phrase uh, in its exact connotation of that word, watch the spirit. But we can find biblical reasoning for watching the spirit. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. So watch, watch the spirit. What I'm doing here is letting you ponder so that never in one of these great worship services as a child of God, as a man of God, I would ever be critical of the church trying to find the direction of the Holy Ghost, trying to find the direction of the will of God when we come together, when we come together. But we're to wait upon the Lord. Who would, uh, they were looking at Brother Wallace rising up back here. There he is, way back there, uh, because he's back there because uh, he's being faithful. I asked Brother Wallace to play the guitar and give us some rhythm back here. He could be sitting over here, but he's back there. So when he gets up, he has to come from way back there. And he can't just leap right up here. They would think that kind of odd, strange, uh, that the speaker should always be up here. Why would he be back there? But see, it isn't the position, it's the power. That's the power. It isn't the position, it's the power. Amen. Brother uh, Norman sitting back there, but out of that chair where he's sitting came the voice of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and the time is coming as we get near perfection, this may all be done away with. All this arrangement we have may be done away with. Did you know God would be just as powerful in a room where there was no platform Amen. or no fixed furniture yes. as he is with all this fixed furniture and all this arrangement tonight? Because that is position. But it's not position, it's power. Praise the name of the Lord. I say it's power. After that you've received the Holy Ghost, power will come upon you after you receive the Holy Ghost. So I'm just dropping a few thoughts to serve our minds as we go in the study of the scriptures, and there's many other lines of thought we can get on uh, tonight, but you see Paul gives a little uh, insight, and along with the tongue, we have a revelation. Did they have revelation? Yeah. A revelation is that which you have not known before. Now, if you tell me something I know, that's not a revelation. I know it. How could it be a revelation? A revelation is that knowledge imparted to you that you previously did not have. It's a revealing of God's word to you. So everything that we hear is not revelation, but there are revelations still coming to the church. Amen. There's revelations still coming to the church. Not all the same thing. I don't always hear what I've heard. God still gives a revelation. If you will listen, he that hath an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit hath to say to the church. And that's a peculiar thing about this people. You have to have an ear to hear, or you won't hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. brother. You'll hear a lot of other things. Right. But you won't hear what the Spirit has to say. That's right. But if you listen with a voice of God in you, tuning your ear, your spiritual ear, you can hear, and all that's said, and everything that's said, you'll hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Praise the name of the Lord. So all these things they had in the early church, a psalm, a tongue, a doctrine, a revelation, it was in their worship. We don't know. We don't have an outline of their worship. How did Paul conduct a worship service? I really don't know. God's never let me uh, see in the scriptures how he did that exactly. No more than Paul would know how I'm going to be working here. I can't know how Paul worked there. 
I just know that we use the same truth. We have the same truth. Amen. Yes. Thank you, yes. Jesus. But there's many ways to say truth. Oh, yes. And there's many ways to worship God. Oh, yes. Amen. That's why the church can't be stereotyped, cannot become in a form, because out of the mouth of babes, God brings praise. Right. <clears throat> Handmaidens give forth praise. Music gives forth praise. Oh, yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Clapping of hands gives forth praise. Dancing with your feet gives forth praise. How the church, we have a little insight. I don't have time tonight to use other scriptures, but it's a wonderful line of thought. We did. How that uh, we worship God. Now what all did Jesus mean? I'll leave this with you. And John 4, when he said, well, let's look at John 4, and I'll, I'll leave this children are back in now. Young people, they're in. Do they have a song or something for us before? Did you bring a song in tonight? Or did, mm. did, they, did the young ones have a song? No, no. Alright. No, Alright. Um, look at John 4. I'm going to finish with this. Uh, John, the fourth chapter, Jesus is addressing um, and uh, let's go to verse 21. Jesus saith unto the Samaritan woman, Jesus saith unto her woman, Believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. <clears throat> talking to the Samaritan woman. Now I'm saying of the Jew, we know what we worship. You don't know what you worship because they had a false worship. Yes. The Samaritan uh, people worship a false God, a false worship. He said, you don't know what you're worshiping, but we know. He was a Jew. Remember, Jesus was a Jew. And he said, we know what we worship. We know what we worship. But you don't know what you worship. So does everybody know what they're worshiping? No. Not in any period of time has everyone known what they were worshiping. But there always has been true worshipers that worshiped him. Now, how does true worshipers worship him? Jesus said, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, but salvation is of the Jews, out of the Samaritans. But the hour coming, now it obviously Jesus did not feel that true worship was yet there. He said, we know what we worship. You don't know what you're worshiping. But the hour coming, but the hour coming, the hour coming. I believe this is the hour. I believe this is the hour. See, I don't believe that that hour back there is this hour. I believe Paul, the apostles, the church worshiped as much as they knew how to worship. But true worship belongs in the latter reign of the church. True worship, the end worship, the final worship. Uh, he said, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And the only ones that fitted that description of true worshipers was found in the upper room. The hour is coming and now is. And those true worshipers gathered in the upper room and they worship in spirit because they have the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost came. And the Holy Ghost had never been. And in truth. So is it possible to worship God in a worship service without the Spirit of God? Can you worship God without the Spirit of God in true worship? I'm asking that. Can, can, you, can you have true worship without two elements are present in a Wednesday night or a Saturday night? Or whenever we come together, 
Thursday, Friday? Is it possible for my soul and your soul and our temple to worship God, clay temples, earthly beings, without two elements? Spirit and truth. And if spirit and truth is not present, is true worship present? No. So if a man gets in the way and inserts his own spirit or his own doctrine or his own teaching, and then another one does, and if that becomes adulterated worship, is that true worship? No. Even though they would say it would be, is it true worship? No, sir. Can me saying that this is true worship make it true worship? Where does true worship come from? It comes from God. And when you are connected with the Word and the Spirit, you are in true worship. You may not know all about what 2,000 years ago they did or said, but if you have the Holy Ghost and you have the Word of God and it's truth, it's not your Word, it's not my Word, it's the Word, and it's in you, and you have the Spirit. Now here's, I'm going to close it out with this. That's why it's so wonderful. I'm not going to close this service. I think that's a carnal expression that we've gotten used to using. Well, let's close it out for tonight. We're going to close out service. You can't close out true worship in a true worship room. Because they may be at midnight in their house, but if they're in the Spirit and they're in the Word, yeah. They're in true worship. Oh, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. amen. Because it's not position, it's power. Right, let me say that again. It's not position, it's power. Power. That's why when you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive power. Now this is going to help me because when I leave here tonight and turn these lights out, I'm out of this building, I'm done, I'm sad. Another Wednesday night recorded. I am not going to leave true worship. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because before I leave, uh, my, uh, my consciousness and go to sleep tonight, we're going to worship God in spirit and in truth because we are part of the church of the living God. And the church doesn't dismiss itself. And we're going to, not, I'm not dismissing you. I'm not ending this service. Will somebody go home tonight? and continue to worship God Amen. in spirit and in truth. Will you worship God going down the highway? Will you, will you worship God? Steve, you and Leon are home tonight and worship God in spirit and in truth. It's incredible. We'll go home tonight and worship God in spirit and in truth. Because the early church did not have a stagnant form of worship. They went from house to house. They broke bread. They celebrated the apostles' doctrine, and they were full of the joy of the Lord yes. because they had found how to worship God Amen. in spirit and in truth. Glory, glory. Oh, there's a lot more. Preach, brother. Praise. Um, I'll use wisdom, and I'll use wisdom. I'm going to tell you. Go home for a season. Amen. 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 Have, have you enjoyed the service? Yes. Yeah. The time, the service. Yeah. Have you felt the manifestation of God yes. in you? Yes. Well, if you have, I want us to give the Lord the honor and the glory that belongs to Him right now. So every one of us, before we go, celebrate the resurrection and the coming of Christ. Let's do it right now. <laughs>